Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 24 of Thick and Thin with Bacon. That's a new name. Um, Thick and Thin is the show where we discuss random things about video games on the internet, and we try to do our best to make it interesting if we can, but usually we can't. With me, as always, my sexy co-host, my partner in crime, Mr. Clean. Had to do it, sorry. LB. S-U-T-K. What's up, buddy? Just looking sexy, that's <laughs> all. You had a good clean and a shave there. Nice. Yeah, well, I'm, I got a little scruff going on. But you got to keep the scruff. Heads, yeah, yeah, I like the scruff. Got to keep the scruff. And uh, we've got some bacon this time around. Our man from Canada. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. That's not a joke. I didn't know we were really going with it. Oh, we're going with it. <laughs> oh. Canadian bacon, all right. Canadian yeah, no, bacon. Bacon, that Canadian bacon shit. Forget that. You don't want that. <laughs> Isn't Canadian <laughs> bacon just ham? I don't want that shit. It's a cured ham. If I wanted ham, I'd, I'd eat ham. I like crispy <laughs> bacon. You fucking Canadians. I don't know. Anyway, Roger, hitman on the show What's again. What's up? What's up, guys? What's yeah. up? There's a reason he's always so smiley, Derek. I don't know why, but there's a reason. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Selling them out. Anyway, um, this week's show, we got a bunch of shit to talk about. This is crazy. If you've been following the Twitters, the tweets, the twats, uh, we're going to have a Chicago land. It's going to happen for the first time yeah. in, uh, fuck, yeah. I don't even know. When was, the last, when was the last land? Two years ago? Three years ago? Uh-huh. It'll be three on the day that we have the land or God, come crazy, August. crazy, man. Thanks, Derek. I like my hipster glasses. Um, I went hipster shopping. That's the other news. And I got hipster glasses because I can't, you can't live in this world without hipster glasses. The only way you can live now. So I got those so that I can see the, the land better. Yeah. Anyway, so it's going to be three years. It's been a really long time. Uh, I'm super excited about it but, and I'll, we'll talk more about it. But before we get there, LB has been doing a little thing around the site. He's really excited. He's helping the community grow and learn. He's a teacher now, really. He's a shaman. Wow. So a shaman. LB, <laughs> I'm a shaman. He's a shaman. So LB, what uh, what are you doing for the site now? Tell them a little bit about it. Tell them what uh, what the purpose is. Give them give them a little you know taste. Well, you know, I kind of stick myself in with the people from the site every once in a while and kind of listen to them and find out what's going on. And and there were a bunch of complaints where they were like, "Well, how do I do this? Or I can't do that? Or you know, this, that, and the other thing." And Truth be told, I kind of figured out a lot of the stuff just by clicking on different shit to do it, but apparently people were intimidated to do that or didn't want to take the time to do that or just couldn't do that. So it was suggested to me that, hey, why don't you do a video or some tutorial on how to do that stuff? So I decided to create a video tutorial on how to do that, or it's called how to do that, and it's anything from blogging to embedding web links and your forum posts, even mod stuff, you know, if you have to move a thread or delete stuff, you know, try to touch anything that I can think of that might be helpful to the people on the site, or they can go to the new in town form. And if you look for the sticky on the top of the form, it's called, how do I do that? They can go ahead and put in the question there if they have it, like, how do I do X or how do I do Y? And I'll try to do a video for him and, and show him how to do it. Wow! So you're like the you're like the Ask Jeeves of Tool to Play, right? Uh, could have, kind of. I could or yeah. a Siri, I guess. You're like you a Siri. I like that. At some point, we'll code it in. You'll be able to talk about it, and it'll instantly, you know, <laughs> my voice will come. Your up. voice will come up, and they'll be like, "Well, douchebag, it's right here." And then you like point it to that'd be, that'd be fantastic. Let's do that. Um, so yeah, so that's a little that's pretty cool. So a lot of people have been saying. How do I do a link? Like just this really simple shit. You know, we're old people, right? So some people just have no idea. And most people don't want to take the time to do it. I hear a lot of people that say, I don't understand why V3 doesn't do X. But it usually does do X. It's just, you know, not what they were used to for the last four and a half years. So they don't bother even checking. So if you're out there and you, you have no clue how to use a site and you're wondering, LB has put together his lovely tutorials. Like he said, go into the uh, new in town area, which is a perfect place for it to be. Ask your question there. If you haven't asked the question, it's probably there already and answered by him because he's, he's, he's pro like that. Right, LB? You're pro? Yeah. Uh, You're pro. pro. It's true. Freaking pro. Um, anyway, 
what else do we have? Oh, next week. This is kind of exciting for us. It's a new thing we're doing. Um, we're going to have, we talked about Gunners a couple, I think it was like two or three weeks ago um, on the show. We were, we were kind of going over whether or not the Gunners are useful. You know, we're doing that whole spiel, that back and forth thing. And we wanted to do a show specifically about game enhancements hardware. So whether it's your headset, the earphones you wear, the gunners you wear, whatever, the controller, you know, like we're seeing a lot of these pro controllers. Me and Derek were out at the E3. We looked at a lot of those controllers and saw the pro versions, and stuff like that. So we wanted to do a show about it, but we figured let's get some industry people on the show as well and get their take on it. Um, so we're going to get FDC Midnight. She actually joined the site. She's the marketing manager for Gunner Optics. Um, she's kind of their PR person. And she was nice enough when we did the review, um, if you guys remember, uh, Tiffany Electrify Fari, which will soon be Tiffany Electrify Nolan, in case you guys haven't seen that. Congratulations Don't to them. Aww. Congrats. A little sight news there. I'm losing, I'm losing a homie, but I'm gaming a sister. It's good. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so she came on and kind of had a little back and forth with a lot of our, uh, our peeps. And we figured, hey, let's reach out to her and have her on the show. So hopefully next week, I think we haven't, got the time totally set in stone. I think sometime next week, probably same day uh, around the same time, we're going to have her on and we're going to be able to do like a little back and forth. I think the idea is maybe not to like just do a straight interview because that's kind of boring, but we're going to talk about game enhancements in general. And this way we get sort of a take her take on it, uh, kind of the way the industry's leading, leaning and stuff. I think that'd be pretty cool. Don't you guys think? I mean, I know LB specifically, you want to maybe ask some questions. You want to get in there, right? So what do you think about that, having maybe more industry folks on? Well, I think it would be a great idea. I kind of like your, your format that you're coming up with. I just uh, – it might be hard to try to avoid specific questions because, you know, I want to ask them specifically about their product. But, you know, maybe it will kind of fold in organically and just kind of go with the flow of the conversation. But – we do got some nice questions up. We've got a little document that Hitman, me, and, and hopefully you will be able to contribute on and put up a couple questions, and maybe we'll, it'll turn out all right. Let's hope so. What do you think, Hit? I know uh, you, you've, been, you've been coming up with some pretty awesome questions, some that are completely ele- el- ineligible. What am I even saying? Illegible. <laughs> you can't even read them. So hopefully that gets fixed. Hopefully they become actual English at some point. But <laughs> assuming they will be English at some point, what do you want to ask? I mean, I guess we'll do like almost like a preview for next week. What are the things that you want to, to really get out of it? So, some of those questions. Wow. I don't <laughs> even know where I was coming from. Well, um, we know. Yeah, let's just leave, okay. it we'll um, leave it at that. <laughs> um, I want to ask a lot of like, not direct questions about their products, but more of like where they see their competitor products along with their, their own products moving forward like what are their type of products you might see right other enhancements coming in, in the future that's what i kind of want to see where her opinion is on the direction that they're going in right no i, and I think it'll be kind of cool hopefully you know hopefully it's okay i don't want to you know obviously when you have someone on the show that has a, a great deal of knowledge about something like this especially when it comes to these gunners the the big question i think that's that we really want to kind of get into once once we get the show going is do they actually help gamers like is it something that improves your skill as a gamer Uh, and that's a really subjective question but i think that's something that you know hopefully we get to we get to kind of bring out and and discuss because that's one of those things where you know the gunners the gunners specifically i mean a lot of people will even say if you get a nice pair of astros you get a nice pair of headsets you hear way more in the battlefield right and you have that audible sort of advantage, I guess, you know, like the sneaking in call of duty and hearing people around a corner before they hear you. That sure. That certainly gives you that, you know, that edge. So we'll see. Um, anyway, before we get into the land stuff, also we wanted to talk about this article that, that I wrote, which wasn't an article, by the way, it was a blog, but for some reason people were like really pissed about it. Um, <laughs> that was really crazy. It's the really? internet, dude. I, I, Come I on, they're gonna be pissed if it. I didn't hear any. I didn't read any of the comments. How bad? Well, were they? the comments were fine. It was more if you. So it was on Reddit for a bit, and the Reddit community was completely like down the middle. Like some people were like, "You're an idiot. You have no idea what you're talking about," which is probably true. I really don't have any idea what I'm talking about. And uh, a lot of other people were saying, "No, no, it makes sense." The problem is, I think a lot of people took it in the context 
that it was an article that was written as fact. And I literally, this was something I woke up one morning and I was like, you know, blank, blank, blank. If this happened, this, you know, this would be kind of cool. Um, and I just wrote it as like a quick little blog. And it got like, it's almost at a thousand reads now. So a lot of people were, were checking it out, obviously. But it sort of was a sort of a split in, in what people thought about it. But basically, if you haven't read the article, um, Vivendi is searching. This is, I think, two weeks ago we heard this rumor. And it's all but confirmed. They went to a sort of a corporate retreat where you, you kind of like let people know, hey, our shit's on the market if you want to buy it. Um, but anyway... So Vivendi, they own Activision Blizzard. That's like one of the biggest publishers in the world right now. Obviously, you got World of Warcraft, you got Call of Duty. You have these insane uh, IPs right now. They're pretty much the golden children of all of gaming right now. It's guaranteed money, right? Um, well, they're they're in debt. Vivendi's in debt, and they're looking at. I think they need to cover like a ten billion dollar deficit. I can't remember. It's quite big. Um, they have a lot, a lot to sell. And they, I think the value they placed was like $8 billion, So that wouldn't even get them completely out of the woods, but it would certainly help. Um, but anyway, it was rumored that they were courting Microsoft. Obviously, it's a huge company, and Microsoft would be a you know, perfect place for them, I would assume. Um, so that was the rumor, that if Microsoft bought it, not only would they be getting these insane IPs like World of Warcraft, and that, that almost brings a whole new discussion of would you then see WoW on an Xbox 360, and like what would happen to these, you know, these games that you've been playing for forever um, in these huge franchises? Would Call of Duty then be a Microsoft-only you know, platform game? How would that all work? Uh, but the big thing that came out of it that I thought was, well, if Microsoft decides to then buy Vivendi, they then gain all of the contracts that Activision had previous. Um, unless there's some clause out there that says, hey, if you sell your company, blah, 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 these contracts are null and void, which we don't know. We don't know the inner, inner workings. But you would assume that they would take over that contract. And if they would, that would mean that Bungie has a contract once again with Microsoft. Now, I'm not saying that Microsoft would own Bungie. That's a lot of people read, I think, too far into it and said, Dude, Bungie doesn't, you know, they wouldn't be owned. It's just a contract. That's true. They would not be owned. But Microsoft would become effectively their publisher. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people out there, naive, I don't know what you want to call them, but they think publishers have no real role in game development. That's true on paper, I think. But I think in a lot of games, SWOTOR is the one you could easily go to, felt rushed in that sense, because publishers said, hey, you got to get this out. We have you know, 300 plus million in this game. Let's go. Let's go. So there is, I think, an influence when a publisher is part of a game. And my whole thing was, you know, isn't it ironic that Microsoft is basically back in with Bungie in sort of this roundabout, you know, carousel style of, of, of business? They would become a part under the wing, let's call it. And that's what I said in the article, under the wing of Microsoft, which is kind of true. Um, I, the feedback was all over the place. What, first hit, what do you, what did you think about this? I mean, where do you think it stands? If Microsoft becomes the publisher, how, what does that do to Bungie or does it do anything? Uh, I, I don't think it'll do anything, but you just know in the back corner somewhere at Bungie, someone's going to be like, God damn, not again. It's, it's just, I you definitely see them being annoyed by it, but what can they do? I don't think it's a bad thing, though. Everything will go back to business. Everyone is here to make money. Right. But um, it'd just be a pain in the ass. Yeah. So they, the, whole, the whole reason for Bungie leaving is because they wanted to go do their own thing. They didn't want Microsoft's help anymore. And now they potentially could be back in that same situation. It'd be ironic. Yeah. That's, what do you think, Bizzle? I think that... Uh... It won't be exactly like before because it was almost like Microsoft is like, okay, we need this game. It's got to be this way. You know, we got to have more hands on. You got to tell us every little step. With this, you know, you're, it's a new IP, so they might be even a little more a bit open to what Bungie might want to do or might not want to do. Where before with Halo, it was like that was a Xbox exclusive game. You know what I mean? So. This, I think they would get a little more leeway, and they wouldn't, you know, Bungie really probably wouldn't get pushed around like they were before, specifically with Halo. I think that's right. I mean, that's, and that's, I think that was my biggest thing to say. It was like, I'm not saying that they're, 
going to come in and all of a sudden say, this is how you're making your new game. This is how it's going to be. Um, but let's say after this contract runs out, like right now, the way it stands is if they inherit this contract, the contract currently stipulates that they're going to make their game on multiple systems. It won't be just on the Xbox. It's, it's already in the contract that multiple systems, there's a certain amount of DLC they've got to provide every year. And there's a certain amount of sequels they're supposed to provide every year. So we already know in that contract that even if Microsoft was to take it over, um, you would assume it's still going to be out for the Sony, for the PS3 and, and or four, I guess you would say. Um, so all those things would still be in place. But I guess what it, for me at least, what it meant was once these contracts run out and like once everything's said and done, what does that mean for the industry as a whole, excluding Bungie? We're getting close at this point. You have all these insane IPs where Microsoft, it's almost like a monopoly. And you'd, you'd wonder if there's sort of, I don't know, maybe some sanction on them or if, if they'd even let this thing pass if Microsoft decided to come in. Do you, do you think there's any legalities against it, LB, where they wouldn't even allow Microsoft to make this purchase? I mean, it seems like you're getting, it's that fine line between owning you know, a bunch of different games to really owning the industry as a whole. Because at least in my mind, once those contracts run out, once, you know, Bungie gets their game out and, and Call of Duty does all their stuff, couldn't then Microsoft just say, okay, every Call of Duty from now on is an Xbox exclusive. Every single, you know, World of Warcraft release is going to be done on, you know, this platform, this platform only. We're going to do it this way. I mean, do you foresee something like that happening? Or do you think Microsoft would just run it almost as a separate business. You know what I mean? Like we, this is a different revenue stream. Like, what do you think? I think it'd have to do a different revenue stream. Cause uh, I think they, they would pull it. Well, my assumption yeah. is that they would pull in more money if they just don't do exclusive titles. Yes. You know, Halo, br it brings a shit ton of cash, but is it bringing in a shit ton as much as COD over all the consoles over that total dollars? That's what they're going to look at. They're going to look at, and be like, all right, we've had this contract for, what is it, a 10-year contract now? With I think it is, yeah. I believe so. So then, you know, they're going to take a look and be like, all right, the first one was exclusive, but then, you know, it started to spread out for everything else. Where do we make the most money? Do we have to do a, a bunch of drastic changes? And then, you know, time will tell towards the end. Will they actually make them all exclusive? I don't think so. Will it be some combo of exclusive IPs? Maybe. And, and then the, I guess the flip side of this too, when I was, I was kind of going through the article reading about it, is that Microsoft balked at the deal. We don't know the specifics, um, but I was reading that, you know, they were obviously one of the people that Vivendi was going after, obviously the deep pockets, you know, it's Microsoft, but that Microsoft wasn't interested. Is that maybe a sign? And I've been kind of thinking about this too. I mean, you've noticed Call of Duty. We don't know when that train's going to stop. We don't, you know, no one has the magic ball, but we've seen it with Halo at least a little bit. Um, and certainly World of Warcraft has lost, I think, three, three, four million subscribers as well. That's, that's on a, on a downturn. Um, do you think maybe Microsoft feels like we've got this too much of a lame duck situation where we could pick it up, uh, and let's be honest here, Bungie, first of all, could flop. It's a new IP. This isn't Halo. Uh, it's not a guaranteed win. We've got, you know, World of Warcraft again on a, on a downswing. And Call of Duty, I mean, come on. We're, we're at what, Black Ops 56? I can't, I don't even know where we're at anymore. They um, lost Guitar Hero. And they lost Guitar Hero, yeah. So there's there's just a lot down, I mean, with, with Vivendi right now. In general, as a publisher. Um, do you think maybe that's, I'll ask you, Hit, do you think maybe that's one of the reasons that we're, that maybe Microsoft would say, hey, this is probably not worth it for us? I mean, do you think that could be why they don't want to be a part of it? Yeah, it's possible. They might see the writing on the wall, especially with Call of Duty. Uh, I think when Black Ops 2 comes out, it'll be the first sign of whether or not Call of Duty will stick around for a little while. You think really I, Black Ops is the, that's the tell-all? I think Black Ops 2 might be the deciding factor. I think we'll either see it completely flop or it'll meet Modern Warfare 3's numbers, but I don't think it'll be the best Call of Duty game of all time. I, 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 don't, I think you'll start to see the shift in the Call of Duty series come this uh, this year. Yeah, and we, we've certainly, I think, all felt it, and even as a community itself, that, and we talk about it all the time on the show, it's sort of just, you know, 
a reoccurring theme. We could do a whole show about this every week and we still wouldn't run out of, you know, what we had to say. But basically the thought that gaming is so recycled right now that any, anything that comes out is a rehash of something else. And, and, you know, how many Call of Duties are we going to go through? How many Halos are we going to go through? You know, how many of these iterations are we going to do? Um, we've already seen, and this is this kind of goes along with what we were talking about with this Microsoft Bungie thing, we've already seen now that Battlefield 4 was announced. And for a company like DICE, who used to take their sweet-ass time on everything, it's really almost a letdown. Like, I, it was the first time where I've... When, when a product was announced where I was like, ah, oh, fuck, like really shit. Does that mean now that, I mean, LB, what do you think? Like, does that mean now we, we're even seeing, you know, do you see dice do this? And you're just like, is this what, is this it? Is this, is this gaming now? Is it once we have a hit, as soon as that, that makes even a small amount of money, let's just churn, Let's keep turning it. Let's keep going like Canadian bacon. No. <laughs> well, I think that's, that's, this isn't the start of that. I think that's been going on now since, honestly, since Halo 2. You know, yes, it's still two years for Halo 3 and then two years for Reach and blah, blah, blah. But then you saw them just stick out ODST out there. Right. You know, that was in two years. They just got slapped out there. They threw it together. I think, if I remember correctly, it was originally supposed to be just a DLC. And then, all of a sudden, it was going to be this full-fledged game. So... I think that's been going on for a little bit of time now. Uh, with Battle 4, Battlefield 4 specifically and DICE, yeah, I'm a little worried, and I thought it was a little a little soon too, but I think, honestly, I think, and for DICE and EA specifically, they've kind of had this planned a little bit because they want to hit that next console. They yeah. want to be early on in the cycle for that. So that's why I think that Battlefield 4 specifically is a little quicker than it normally would. So you think that's more of a sort of end of end of life get, like game that they're just kind of throwing out to, to get it out before? Is that what you're saying? Or do you... No, I think... Because I think that the next console is going to be in 2013. I don't know if they have the release date for Battlefield 4, but I'm assuming that's going to be uh, Christmas next year. Yeah. Or right. Christmas season next year, and I think they're going to tie that in with the you know the new Xbox release. So I think yeah. they're just going to try to jump on that bandwagon bandwagon and get a little bit of that hype. Yeah, I, yeah I that makes that. that makes sense. I totally agree with LB. You think so? You you want to be that Halo One on the new console? You want to be that game that everyone wants when the a new system comes out? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I never thought of it that way. Well, I know this. I mean, I think the big thing that they're that they're saying that they want to do, and again, following. I mean, I, I don't blame them. Following the sort of line of success that all the other games are doing is they. From what I hear, they want to do Battlefield Four, but then they want their. Uh, is it Medal of Honor? Is their other title? Is that it? I can't recall. Someone can tell me in chat or something. Um, but they want that to sort of be their Black Ops, right? So you've got your Modern War, then you've got your Black Ops, then you've got your Modern War, and then you get they do that sort of handoff for for development. And I believe that's the model that they're trying to go with. They want to do, you know, Medal of Honor, and then they want to do Battlefield, and they want to do Medal of Honor, and this sort of, you know, recycle. So we'll hit, you know, Battlefield Five by, you know, next spring or something. Um, I don't know. Oh, it's it's just it's a shame. It's a shame. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Oh, LB just said he he lost his feed, so we're gonna have to wait for him to come back. But um, oh, I was wondering why he was staring at me all <laughs> yeah. the time. You want to see what a lost feed LB looks like? Oh, he, he disappeared. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's just, and it's one of those things where it's just ah, it's like the rehash of the rehash. And maybe going back to what we were talking about, just maybe um, that's why Microsoft says, "Look, we've got our our recycled content. We've got the games that we want to put out, um, and we don't feel the need to sort of buy buy into." fleeting series i mean i don't know it just seems like to me again the the alleged amount was like i think eight billion is what vivendi wanted i don't know oh. don't you feel like eight billion but realistically don't you feel like microsoft for eight billion that's like that's not a big deal for them is it you think eight billion is no, a big it's deal not a big deal but it's something you want to think about but i mean eight billion yeah. is like hey that's like you know, hey last night we went out for some drinks we spent about eight billion that's what they do that's microsoft they're big balling dude <laughs> They don't care. That's chump change. I mean, I guess. No, I, 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 I still think that they're like eight billion for. Let's just say, call the Call of Duty series is not worth it if it's on its way. If they think it's on its way out, 
Yeah, if they think it's on its way out. But here's the thing. What about now, I mean, before we go on to the land stuff, what about World of Warcraft? We know that's on a downswing, sure enough, right? We we they went from 14 million subscribers, no 12 million, I'm sorry. I think they're down to the numbers are around ten or nine, which is still the biggest game in the world. I mean, you're still you have the most subscribers. It's one of the I think it's the but second it's, most it's, played game in the world as well. It's not the game, though. It's not the name of the game. It's the genre that it's in. Yeah, the MMO the, itself? The MMO genre has been proven to have lost money. The only successful MMO in the history of MMOs is World of Warcraft. Well, success is very... That's subjective, right? Because the whole yeah, thing about yeah, an MMO course. company in this market is if they build a game and they say, you know, say they get 255,000 subscribers or 300,000 subscribers, they can sustain, like Rift. Rift is a game that's the best example. Tryon is doing well. They're profitable. They're making new games. We're seeing Defiant come out, which is a big third-person MMO that they're releasing, uh, I think, next year, next quarter, um, and, and a lot of that other shit. So they've got a ton of stuff in the pipeline. They're still developing new games. And they don't have a huge amount of subscribers. I mean, they've got, you know, maybe quarter million. They're successful. They're just not Blizzard successful. They're not, you know, worldwide, millions and millions of people, people stabbing each other. I don't know if you read this story. It was in the news yesterday. It's a tangent here. Guy stabbed another dude because he was raging during his raid. Dude came over to say, bro, what's wrong? Why are you raging so hard? Turn around, stab. (laughs) Stab. Stab. <laughs> World of Stabcraft. Stabbed him. Right in the stomach. What other game do you know where someone's raging that hard and they just stab some random dude? First of all, random dude should not come to your house and they hear you screaming. If someone's screaming in my neighborhood, you just look the other way and you turn around and that's it. That's it. You walk away. You don't go in and say, hey, bro, why are you screaming so loud? So that was probably a mistake on his part. You can't be doing that. But he, he stabbed him. In, no, he stabbed him in the sternum. Right in the... Whoosh, and he's cool. He's like, you know, shit happens, bro. Stay me in the storm. It's no big deal. Wow. That's crazy talk. That's the world of Warcraft. Nah, you know what? If I, if there were a game of Halo and somebody sh- shugged my shoulder and I got killed, I'd freak out. <laughs> but would you stab them? Could you get to the level where you were like, it's stabbing the, the time. Thing, no, I don't think I would. But the thing that I don't understand from that story is, did he have the the knife in his hand already because that's the only way I could see him be like ah stop <laughs> I don't think I mean maybe I'm weird but when I'm playing WoW I don't generally keep like cutlery around exactly it's not like a that thing where he like, went into his bag and he's like I'm gonna get this guy well from what I hear I mean you'll have to you'll have to look it up I, I think what happened was the guy goes in he says you know hey you're kind of raging about this WoW thing and from from what I and I, I want I would I, we need some confirmation because it was it, when I heard it it was so funny but the the tale goes like he says dude it's just a game you know that's like to try Aww. to calm him down and you can't say that to a gamer you can't do never that never say that you don't say those words because of course you know the response was it's not a game it's my life and that like you know <laughs> t- took him into a huge rage where he just fucking went ape shit and tackled the dude and there was a scuffle that broke out and then you know. Some somehow Cutlery got involved. And he got stabbed in the sternum. Who doesn't? Crazy. And so the que- the real question is, who doesn't want to buy a game like that? A company like that makes products, makes you want to stab people. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. That's addiction, people. That is the level in which you are way too addicted to ever play. Again. You need to kind of back up and take some stock in your life. I don't know. It's terrible shit. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's good stuff. But anyway, so that's the news on on that. I mean, we'll see. Obviously, where it goes, they need to sell the company. There's plenty of other people that can buy it. In fact, you know, if they wanted to, Sony could buy it too. I, I haven't really seen anything that says uh, no. Or not Sony won't them. buy them. They have their own money problems. You think? You think they got money problems? I don't they, know. What was the last year they lost like a billion dollars? I don't know. Billion sounds billion sounds a little much. A little much. It's possible. Someone, someone to check Google. It, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, something ridiculous is like, how the hell are these guys making money? How yeah. are they staying afloat? I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy shit. It was. It was after that whole uh, earthquake thing. Oh right. Yeah, they had lost a lot because they. Well, I mean, and the Sony's Sony got network a huge, hacking and everything. Yeah, the, the hacking. They lost like six hundred mil from that. Yeah, but I really feel like eight billion for these companies is not a big deal. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so moving on, the big news. 
that everyone's waiting for, or not. I don't know. Maybe no one wants to go. Um, we haven't done it in two years. We're finally fucking doing it, and we're doing it a little different this year. So I'm, I'm super excited about this. Uh, that is, of course, the Chicago Land 2012. Um, oh, I'm fucking super excited about this shit. Anyway. Super excited. Yes, I'm very excited. The land is not a lie. The land is happening. When I said the land is a lie, it's not a lie. 2012 Chicago land. This is the first land ever that we're going to put it against the game that made too old to play really what it is. Uh, Halo. So we're going back to the roots with this land. So the plan, the plan for the land is to be uh, November 9th in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is five minutes outside of O'Hare. Um, the hotel, we're not gonna we're not gonna lock down until we know for sure. But those are the dates. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be the weekend that Halo Four is released. So pretty cool shit, dude. We're gonna have a land that basically runs right up against the release of Halo Four. You're gonna have maybe two days to play it before you actually get all the way out to Chicago and play it with everybody else. So I don't know, man. That's gonna be fucking sweet. You're gonna not all even. be able to not, not even. even two days. You don't got the time. You got no time. But And I think what we were trying to say was maybe we would, you know, have, like, a rule. A gentleman's rule. Which is, <laughs> if you get the game, you've got to wait until the land to actually open the box. No way. And play. Is that going to happen, LB? What do you think? Come on. No. No? Why not? <laughs> no. Gentlemen. Gentleman's rule. I'm not going to get the game on Tuesday and then wait 48 or 72 hours until open it and get to the land? Gentleman's rule. No. No. Not going to nope. happen? Nope. That's, I could do that's cruelty. Yeah. For me, that's, that's nothing. That's like a walk in the You're park. High. I'll do that shit all day. All day. But anyway, so that this is this is the plan. The plan is to have a, a Halo 4 influenced land. Now, this doesn't mean for the guys that are coming to the land that say, you know, I, I want to play Forza. I want to play whatever. That's fine. We've never said this is the game you have to play. But we figure the purpose for this type of land, which would be, I think, beneficial for everyone on the site, a lot of the guys are Halo guys anyway, is we're focusing it on Halo 4. So we really want Halo 4 to be kind of the premier game. We'd love to do, like, you know, some tournaments with Halo 4. And I think it'd be really cool to have a LAN party of a game that's pretty much untested, uh, that nobody, you know, has even touched or even cares about. I mean, what do you think, LB? Do you think... Do you think Halo carries the weight, enough weight, where the people would come just to play Halo 4? Or do you think those those days are past? you think it's over? I think that it's going to be new enough or that, you know, it's only a few days old that you will have that extra draw where you can be like, hey, you know, before it was going to take me a month to finish campaign because I can only play, you know, an hour or every other day or something. But, you know, now it can, I'm going to be at the land. I could stay up 12 hours and finish the damn campaign. Or, you know, hopefully it's still new enough where you're not going to be like, oh, if I get there, I'm going to get my ass totally kicked because I don't know what's going on. Well, everyone is, for the most part, going to be the same way. You know, the maps are still going to be new. Mechanics, if there are that many new mechanics, it's still going to be somewhat new. Plus, there's the whole excitement of the land itself. So you throw all that into the the nerd geek soup blender <laughs> spin it up. I think you're going to have a pretty good draw. I think so too. But I mean, for some reason, and I said this before the show, but I'll say it again, this land this year, I'm, I'm, I wasn't excited about Halo four. I mean, I am, I like Halo. I always end up buying it. You know, that's me. It's like, Hey, I'm buying Halo four and I buy it and it sits on a table for, you know, six weeks. Um, and then I play it and I'm disappointed. But this land, because I know that there's going to be a land specifically for Halo, I'm actually excited for Halo 4 because Halo 4 means that I'm at the land. So um, at least for me, being able to sort of get together with all the people that made Tool to Play what it was um, and started it on that sort of Halo vibe, to be able to do that again for me uh, is just going to be fucking awesome, dude. And I, I've, I've already seen in chat we're having... This is the great part. We're having some people talk about maybe profanity versus tool to shoot. Maybe some clan rivalries will happen. I'm hoping that we all get drunk enough and maybe stab each other in the sternum, World of Warcraft style. Because that would be dope. If one guy gets stabbed, that's okay. That's worth it. That is a, that is a well worth it land party, I feel. Well, didn't you say there was a pool by one of the rooms or something like that? Oh, yeah. So the cool thing, I mean... <laughs> 
I'm already. I'm picturing. Here. I'm picturing some serious issues here. <laughs> serious issues. Uh, the the land room that we're looking at it overlooks the pool of the hotel, and you can walk directly into the pool from the land room. So at some point in time, someone will get drunk enough to be thrown into that pool. And let me remind you that it's November in Chicago at that time. So that pool will be nice and chilly, nice and ripe for some. And, we, and we've seen some things happen at lands where that is really not, that is well within the realm of possibility. That is very, very likely, in fact, I would say. So, but what, and what, so what are you guys most excited about? Hit, what, do you, what do you miss about the land? What are you excited about you know, now that you know that we're, we're actually having it? What are, you, what are you most excited about? My favorite parts of the land are meeting all the people from the site that you haven't seen since the last, the last land, land ages ago, um, the partying, the uh, the gaming, and and now that Halo Four is coming out and the planets align, it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I, Halo Four that will be a lot of fun. I, I think that's the thing that we missed in a lot of the other lands that that is the big difference. Normally, when you have a land and it's in August and you sort of been playing this game for the last three years, five years, whatever. Uh, once you get to the LAN, you'll notice if you've never been to a LAN party before, and this isn't just exclusive to a tool to play. This is pretty much any LAN party. You spend a lot less time gaming and a lot more time hanging out with people that, you know, you've been playing with for the last five years of your life, because obviously you don't get to see these guys very often. But now when you have a game that's just come out that no one has played, that's really fresh. Do, LB, do you think we'll actually have people gaming more because of this? Like, do you think... It'll be like, hey, do you want to hang out and get a beer? It's like, no, dude, I'm doing the campaign, all right? Don't, don't talk. I mean, do you think it's possible we won't even see people in the land room, but they'll just fucking hook it up in their, in their hotel room and then we'll, we will see them in maybe two days? Like, no. What do you think? I, no? I don't think it'll be that extreme, but you'll definitely have a more concentrated effort to be gaming, you know, and specifically trying out the new stuff. Um, you know, you're still probably going to have people doing a bunch of Borderlands because that comes out in September. Oh, yeah, Borderlands. Um, you know, Halo's going to be big. And there's always the the aspect of like, okay, we've just been playing for four hours. I'm freaking hungry. Or, you know, I want to go back to the bar. And you go, you go ahead and do that. But like you said in the past, you know, the game may have been out for six months already or eight months already, and you're just kind of going through the motions. Here, you're, it's... It's all brand new stuff. So I think you're going to get more excitement to play, but I don't think it's going to be all head down. I'm gaming for 12 hours, passing out, going back to the room, sleep for three hours, go back and gaming. I don't think, yeah, I think it's going to be a nice mix of debauchery and game. <laughs> and you think the, that's... the only thing, the only thing missing from the other lands was a game, right? There wasn't that one game that everyone could focus around rally around. That's why I think Halo four will be that, one star of the show kind of thing. Yeah. And, and it's weird. Cause when, when the land first started, I mean, this was six years ago, we had it in this fucking tiny, it was like the most God awful room ever. And it was like 25 of us. And we were in this literally, it was like 600 square feet. Felt like it felt like it was, we were like on top of each other, just sweating dudes. It was, the, it was horrible. <laughs> and the, the difference was because gamers are, I think are generally socially awkward. A lot of the people were just playing games. It was like head down, like, Hey man, my name's, my name's Bill. And uh, I like video games. I'm just going to play this game. So, <laughs> hey. Oh, hey, your name's, your name's Dude I Rock. That's cool, man. And you got a that's nice website. Um, you know, and that was it for like that year. And then as the years went on, the game <laughs> became less relevant yeah. and the social experience became more relevant. So there was this sort of shift. And now you're kind of, you're getting a game that's, everyone is kind of, I think people are excited for Halo 4. I really do. I feel like unlike Reach, people are saying, we've got a new developer it's almost the opposite of what I thought would happen. I thought, hey, we're going to get a new developer. People are going to say, there's no fucking way. It's not Bungie. I don't want to play it. But I've seen the opposite of that. I've seen people being like, this is a new developer. They've got new, they're breathing new life into it. It's going to be a different Halo. And it almost seems to be shifting that other direction that maybe we'll have people that are, you know, back in those chairs. And they're like, hey, my name is uh, Steve. It's really into Halo 4. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just like Halo 4. It's just what I like. So, you know, I don't know. What do you think, Elvin? I, I, yeah. Well, hit. What do you think? Uh, Either. Uh, I agree. I, yeah, I agree. You think I, it's gonna totally happen? Totally makes. Totally makes sense. You think the nerdgasms <laughs> will be like, outweigh the social, aspect at some point? No, no. I think it'll be a pretty even split. 
What do you now? What do you think about tournaments at the land? Do you think a land party? Uh, we've gone back and forth with this. Some years we do it. Some years we don't. Do you think a, la- a land party even needs to have a tournament? Like, do, do you think a land party has to have a tournament to be a land party? A lot of people, first time dudes, when they come, they're like, "Hey, this is great. What events are we planning?" And I'm like, "Events? This is you're fucking at the events." <laughs> Like, what do you want? Do you want me to fucking light some fireworks off? You come into a room, <laughs> and then you turn your Xbox on, and you've started the event. The event is on. Congratulations. I mean, do you think the land needs, uh, LB, do you think the land needs that? Like, do you think we need some of these events, like, for the new guys, maybe? I guess my, my real question is, because we've grown as a community together, and we've all met at the lands, and we've sort of all become friends in that way, as an outsider, a guy that's coming in maybe to his first land, maybe he's been on the site for a while. Is it, is it too much to ask for them to just sort of like, Hey, go with the flow, you know, just grab a beer and get in and let's start talking. Let's hang out. Or do you think we sort of need these structured things like a tournament to sort of bring them into the fold? Like, what do you, what do you think about that? I think it, it kind of depends on, on the member. If you've got someone somewhat active in multiple clans, let's say if you got like bunny who gets around like a $2 whore, you know, he's basically a male hooker, hooker. right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think he, he could just fit in the mold <laughs> and you'd be fine. You know, he could be in and just come out and we'll hit the bar and have a good time, play a few games, go get something to eat, you know, come back, maybe try to set something on fire. Then you're okay. But if you've got somebody super pretty new to the site and they've just kind of been lurking around and they're trying to feel their way and they see the land and they're like, Hey, maybe I live in Chicago and it's only going to be 20 minutes away. Let me check it out. I think they might need a little more, a little more structure. So, to have a, uh, I don't know, tournament or mixer or whatever you want to call it, might be a good idea for them, just so you know they kind of get the structure. Because every year you still get new people. And even with my first land, which was the second land at the uh, the ghetto hotel, oh, that was which great was, land. It was still fun as hell. Though. Yeah, that was good. That was good. <laughs> You know, you, you meet people for the very first time, and you're still kind of a little stand bash, stand backish, and you're kind of like, all right, let's feel this out, see how it's going. But then, you know, you kind of break into the mold, and, and if, you know, you need a little liquid courage, that's there. Yeah, that's the key, right? <laughs> and, you know, it helps out. And then once you get in the flow of it and the excitement of it, and, you know, just after you've had that, you know, night shot, and you're putting stuff together, then it just go. So I think you're going to have a little bit of, of everything. And for this specific land, I definitely think you need a little tournament mixer thing. Well, I, I think you're right. I think you're the personality of the person coming in is what really, really needs that. Like we could, you know, Bunny's very active. Like as an example, I like to use Bunny because he's in chat right now. So I like to make fun of him. But you know, Bunny's really active and he's really outgoing. But he, he could come to land all of a sudden. We find out he's just like a total. He just doesn't like people. We're like, hey, Bonnie, we know, yeah, man, it's been great to finally meet you. And he's like, please don't touch me. I'm so scared. Don't. don't. <laughs> this is embarrassing for me at all. I want to be in the corner. Right. The corner. That's a possibility. Oh, you never know. And those people, I think, need a little bit of the boost. Maybe the liquid courage. I don't know. So I, I don't know. What, whatever you guys think. I, I, I'm, I'm definitely open to a tournament. I think it would be fun. The big thing for me, if we could do it. I know we've already said it's not going to happen. Gentlemen's agreement, no Halo 4 playing for two days. <laughs> we all show up. We open that bitch up. We, you know, everyone have their plastic still on. That would be like how you knew. But then some asshole would just buy two copies. He'd open one up at home and bring That's like right. a closed one. Yep. Like, Damn straight. Like this fucking <laughs> asshole right here from Canada. He's, Can- he's fucking Canadians. We definitely need a tournament, man. We definitely need a tournament. This is the best time to have a tournament when the, the playing field is even. And no one has that much experience over the other. Now, what do you think, Perfect Hit? What it, can we do a no unwrapping rule? Is no, it possible? No, that's just cruel. That's just cruel. Oh, God, you guys yeah. suck. And, and someone will definitely, Fuckers. someone will definitely buy two copies. <clears throat> and yeah, the, you just never know. There's no way of enforcing it. It's cruel. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a shame. It's really a fucking shame because I think an unwrapping tournament would be the coolest fucking tournament ever. If you could somehow do an unwrapping <laughs> tournament where everyone's just like, it'd be like Christmas, but like with, you know, 60 older dudes, which is really fucking bizarre. You think about it, but everyone the at the same time, the only way to enter the tournament is to show your right. copy, 
bro, you've got me. That's entry fee. You had me at sealed copy. <laughs> That'd be the, it's the greatest tournament ever. It's like, let me see. Look, if you want to pay the extra money to unbox it yourself, you're basically paying 120 bucks to play it early. If you want to do that, but you come in, you get your copy. You're like, let me see the copy. Then you unwrap it. Well, you know what it'd be? It'd be like two guys who don't care about Halo that ended up actually agreeing exactly. to it. Exactly. It'd be like me and fucking, I don't even, who else? Me and somebody else. It's not going to happen. Bubba? Bubba would win. Yeah, it'd be me, and, it'd be me by myself. That's lonely. <laughs> That's not a fun tournament. Oh, well. I'm giving up. I thought it would be good. I guess maybe. We'll see. But we'll, we'll definitely have something for Halo. Now, speaking of Halo, I mean, we're not getting away from Halo. Do we need another game? Or are we set? You said Borderlands. Can we do? Can we do Borderlands at a land? Is that like, or is that too? I feel like that's very co-oppy, but it's not really social. Can we do? Well, Borderlands? it's not necessarily social. It's definitely co-op. It's four-player co-op. But I mean, look, you don't want to scare people. Think like, oh, I, I don't like Halo. That's a that's all they're gonna do. I'm not gonna go. No, more games are gonna get played. But don't be surprised if the overall percentage. A lot of people are playing Halo. Yeah, you're going to have some people playing COD. You're going to have some people doing Forza. You're going to have some people playing Titty Golf. You're going to have some people playing Borderlands. But there's going to be a lot of Halo being played. I guess. It's well, true. I'm super excited. I know you guys are excited. Very. Any other comments you want to take about the land? I want to cry because I'm so happy. But I don't want to actually plan the land. I just wish it would be here because I hate that part. That, that's not the fun part. <laughs> Planning land sucks balls. But anyway, so the land again, November 9th that weekend, pretty much confirmed, hopefully. Get so get my, November 9th through 11th? Through the 11th. So we'll play some Modern War. No, we're not going to play Modern War. People will show up on the 8th. That's fine. Hey, look, yeah. this is here's the thing, guys. If you want to come on a Thursday, and I'll say this now, and we can maybe even do like a little suggestion. What do you suggest for people? Uh, first time landers. I'll, and I'll go right here. Here's my first suggestion. Come on a Thursday. Oh, because yeah. the Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something right now. <laughs> Friday and Saturday are fun. But the Thursday is fucking ridiculous. And the it's reason true. is because there are no games to play. No. There's no games. You have no chance nope. to play anything. No games. No gaming. All you do is get really, really drunk and possibly kill someone. That's the Blackout the, Thursday. Blackout, Blackout Thursday. Thursdays. Blackout yeah. Thursday. You have taxi doing. It's uh, insanity. Car bombs with Thursdays me. are insane. You know, honestly, Thursdays I like. I, I could skip the Thursday. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna be honest with you. If I could skip the Thursday, I would because I am an emotional wreck for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> I get so <laughs> hammered on Thursday. I don't even know what's going on by Saturday. I'm like, did I even pay the bill? I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Thursday is ridiculous. So that's my tip. What's your tip? Oh. You have a tip, LB? I'm putting you on the spot. Ah, well, you took my, my thing. Well, my everyone knows that's, 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 but, that's the best. Um, definitely put in, if you're a guy that holds on to your games and doesn't trade in for credit or whatnot, you definitely have to put in all your games into your damn system and make sure you run up those, those updates. updates or do any down the uh, license transfers. Yes. yes. Make sure that is all done because I don't know if we will have an internet connection or not, but even if we do... It's being sucked in by 50 dudes trying to do a freaking download for like a two gig download. Can yeah. you imagine that? It oh, would Battlefield? Like Can you imagine hours. that? Yeah, no. Yeah, update your shit. No one ever does. Yeah. Update your shit. Oh. And bring a fucking Xbox. That's another thing. We provide the monitors and the speakers. You provide the Xbox. So if you want to play video games, and I know a lot of people feel like, oh, well, you know, so-and-so will bring theirs, so I'll be okay. Well, if everyone has that attitude, guess what? You're all going to show up to a LAN party with a bunch of screens. And it's going to be me and LB <laughs> playing fucking Halo together and be like, hey, guys, what's up? What are you guys doing? You guys going to play? No? Cool. You watch Jersey Shore on that DVD player you brought. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your tip, Hit? You got, you got a tip for anybody? Um, prepare to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, That's yeah, a safety the Xbox, measure. Xbox license transfers. Um, spending money. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. 
Oh, what about the loca- – well, if this is a hotel we're going with, what about the location of the hotel? Is it going to be easy to get to from the hotel? Can we just hop on a train? Is it yeah, like so here's the – I'll give you the lowdown of this hotel that I've got pinged so far. Um, we, we were talking about it before the show, but I'll give you a little bit of the, the tidbits. Is it going to be the ch- the cheaper of any of the – I think it's the cheapest land we've ever done in terms of um, the value for the people coming. I think last year's land was up to 120 bucks a night. It was really expensive. Um, so we've moved it outside of Chicago. It's right outside. It's 13 minutes outside of O'Hare. So it's a quick cab ride to get off the plane, uh, 13 minutes down to Schaumburg. It's like the, the town right over. Uh, because of that, the cool part is that's their, that's like the shopping area of the burb. So if you want to bring the wife and kids, this is probably the best land to do it ever. Uh, you don't need to get on a train. don't need anything. They have like the largest mall in all of Illinois right there. Movie theaters. There's the, uh, what's that game? The game works. Got one of those there. If you feel like playing video games somewhere else, because you're an asshole, you can. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a crab shack. There's tons of freaking steakhouses. There's a brewery next to the hotel. Oh. If that doesn't spell oh. disaster, I don't know what does. Uh, oh, really? You, oh. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. There's the fucking oh. brewery right there. You walk to the brewery. Oh, God. So in terms of the location of the land this year, it's actually pretty fucking awesome. Um, like I said, the only thing is when you get off the plane, you got to take a 13-minute cab ride. It'll cost you probably 20 bucks. Um, the good news is for the people driving in for the first time, it won't cost you 50 bucks to park your car for two days because uh, it'll be in Schaumburg. They don't have, you know... When you're not next to an airport where parking is the most desirable thing in the world, you don't have those fees. So it's free parking for anyone who wants to show up. Oh, that's awesome. Very awesome. No, no I'm parking driving. fee. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're a driver, you're, this is the best land ever for you. Cause you don't have to spend any money on that shit. Uh, there are no buses Lala from the airports. You have to, you're going to have to cab it. You got no choice. Um, but like I said, the cab is so it's really, it's cheap as balls. And we were saying what we might do uh, is just run like a bus, a bus thing of our own. So like, well, I'll just, you know, I got a seven seater SUV. Um, if we if we can get some times when people are flying in, I'm more than happy to drive down and pick people up. It's, it takes me nothing. It takes me nothing to get down there. Um, so that's cool. But yeah, back to the, back to the actual room rates. 75 bucks is what we're, we're looking at for a king size bed, room with a king size bed. Pretty fucking cheap considering it was 120 uh, last year, the year before that, uh, I think the doubles that's two beds is 85. And then if you want to get the, I'm a fucking ridiculous pimp who has a bar in his own room and a fucking bathtub and two bathrooms, that's 175 a night. So if you want to be big baller for whatever reason, you want to be pimp daddy, you got that. Yeah, so we were playing poker that night. <laughs> Someone's got to get that room. Someone's got to get it. <laughs> Tank from Midway, it's it's a considerable distance, right, Judy? It's- yeah, Midway. If you're coming in from Midway, it's going to be a little bit further because Midway is on the other side of the city. Um, east or west? I can't even remember. So, in, well, you're you're coming east, so you're going to. I mean, it's probably I would say an hour to get there. Maybe no well, less than an hour. Probably 45 minutes if you're coming from Midway. So it's it's kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. Midway is kind of a pain in the ass, which sucks and that's unfortunate. The only thing I think you could do for Midway is you could take the train from Midway to O'Hare. Um, that's really cheap. That's like three bucks. And then from O'Hare, you'd take the a cab out to uh, out to the land. So pretty exciting. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping by the end of tomorrow um, we can sign the deal. As always, the amount of rooms that we get directly relates to how much we pay for the actual land room. So I'm hoping to at least do 20 to 30 people. That's Again, I don't expect much out of this land. I just want all the people that want to kind of come hang out and see each other again to come and hang out. If we get 50 people, that's cool. If we get 150, well, fuck, we don't have enough room. So please, if you don't want to come, don't come. But if you want to come, you want to have some fun, come. you want to just do it. Don't be fucking bitches. And let me say this right now. And this is a good, this is a good thing for anyone that's been at any of the other lands. I don't think anyone's going to want to play rock band this year. So I think... <laughs> for the first time ever there won't be random fucking shouting and singing in the corner i think derek might be upset about that we'll see i don't know does anyone play rock band anywhere no right we're, we're done with this phase remember activision drove that into the ground it's out no rock band <laughs> but taxi suggested this year is the first year we have a real life band we just get a bunch of band shit together throw a stage up and let people randomly hammer on the guitar <laughs> wow while being drunk it's like having a wedding singer for free, really. That's what it is. 
But anyway, that's going to wrap it up. We've done a pretty long show, hour and six minutes. Uh, appreciate everyone coming out and listening. Again, the LAN will be happening November 9th, hopefully in Schaumburg, Illinois. Uh, we're going to try to do, you know what we're going to try to do? I didn't even announce this. I think what we're going to try to do is do it as a Kickstarter. Everyone's doing Kickstarters. This is the new thing, right? So this way, I don't have to worry about going through the PayPal thing. I fucking hate doing all that shit. So I was going to throw up a Kickstarter page, do all the ticket sales there. If people want to donate again, this is all going to go to Child's Play Charity. Anything that is over the amount we need for the land, we're either going to do over the amount or um, half of all the proceeds. We haven't figured that out yet, but the money will be going to Child's Play, any of the actual profits. So if people want to donate, they want to do something, they want to sponsor, we can do that all on the Kickstarter page. Um, Usually runs about five grand to do the whole thing. So we'll put it at five grand. Hopefully we meet that mark and we actually have a land party. Like that'll be, that'll be the goal. Um, hope you guys all come. Hope you had a good time listening. Now I'll be, if they want to hit you up, they want to connect with you about this land and learn from you. Where would they do this? Would they do it on the Twitter? I feel like they would. You could, you could hit me up on Twitter at L B S U T K E. Awesome. What about you? Canadian bacon. Where can they find you? <laughs> You can find me at i6 hitman on Twitter and twitch.tv forward slash i6 hitman for my live streaming channel. Badass. And if for some fucked up reason you haven't put me on your Twitter yet, you're not following me, you don't want to listen to everything I have to say, but you want those tidbits, those gems. You can get those gems. Where? On Twitter. At Twitter slash D O O D I R O C K. Next week, before we go, I want to stress this because this is really kind of some kick-ass shit. FDC Midnight will be coming on the show. She is the marketing manager for Gunner Optics. We're going to have a little discussion about game enhancements, gunners, headphones, controllers. So make sure you guys show up next week. You'll see the time sometime around. Uh, we'll, we'll try to promote it a little bit this, this week to get people actually in the know. Since I love to promote things, you know, four seconds before they actually happen. Uh, we'll try to get the time situated and we'll send that out. But I want as many people as possible to kind of come into the channel, ask their questions about Gunner. We're going to just have a discussion about whether or not these game enhancements actually help, what they're doing, what Gunner specifically is doing uh, to sort of move that forward and all those kind of cool things. So if you, you want to ask a question to, to, to Gunner or you want to just be a part of the conversation, next Tuesday, come on the show. Have a great time. Um, until then, we'll see you guys later. Peace. Take it easy. Later.